Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me here tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour, and I work on projects from be beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so we are pressing our blocks all night tonight. So we are working on these super cute blocks for the triangle tango quilt. We got a whole stack of them. Here they are. <laughs> so we need to press all of these so they look like this guy tonight. So we are making the triangle tango quilt from Missouri Star Quilt Co. And here is what all the blocks look like when they are all together. So the fun thing about this quilt is that just by turning these blocks in specific ways, we will get that neat, uh, that neat quilt design that they, that they have there. So I do have the link for that below. It's the Missouri Star Quilt Co. It's from one of their block publications uh, with Jenny Doan. Um, so you can check that out below. And today we are straight pressing. So last night we finished the two day event of sewing our last little strip right here, our last little strip onto the block. And tonight we are going to press them all. So I'm gonna flip you around. I wanna get going on this right away. We have 167 of these guys to go. And the one that's done is 168. And we'll give that a little press too, I think. I've been handling it a lot, it's getting wrinkly. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna flip you around and uh, uh, we'll get going. Oh, Catherine, you got your fat quarters and I have, you like the little line that I drew on it. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice. I'm glad you like it. Yes, yeah, sometimes I, I draw little characters on, on the packages. All right, so I got my little pressing mat out here. I got my cordless iron. So this is that Panasonic cordless iron. The like um, I think I have it as a link here, but it's the Panasonic 360 cordless iron. <laughs> it's the 360 because you can it has a point on either side you actually can't set it up like this like a normal iron you have to actually set it back in the cradle which is good because then it'll it'll start heating up again but it actually stays uh, really really warm for a long time so um, that's not a huge problem all right oh we're gonna do a count here we go okay all right I'm gonna do I'm gonna try and do two at once, like I did last time, although they are a little bit bigger now. So, oh good, they, they still fit. So I'm gonna get a little higher up so you guys can see everything. And I can still, I can still read your comments. So these bottom ones are pretty wrinkly because they were at the bottom of our pile for, um, for when we were sewing the strips on and they we got that huge pile behind the sewing machine. Yeah, I think this whole doing two at once is the way to do it. I have to reach a little bit up here, which you know isn't great for the back, but I'm standing, so that's that helps a bit. All right, they're looking cute. So just so you guys know, I am going to be out. Um, we're not going to be here on Monday because Monday is Memorial Day. And then also um, something has come up and I am going to be out on Tuesday as well. So it's not anything, you know, serious or anything. It's just I'm going to have I have a uh, penguin and fish meeting with some designer friends that I that I know, and uh, they meet uh, every evening at, not every evening, every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna have a meeting with them. So <laughs> you can't count past 10, then you're, then you're handing it off, huh, Jennifer? <laughs> All right, um, so I won't actually be here on Tuesday either next week. So next week, we're gonna start back up on, 
on Wednesday. But it's all good. We're going to get going on the Splendid Sampler 2 again, and we'll work on that for a little, a little while. But it is soon Finish It Friday. Um, Finish It Friday is every first Friday of the month. We uh, kind of stop our general stuff that we're working on and pick up a project. To, usually I like doing a project that's been sitting around for ages, you know, even years, and just pull out that project again and work on it. Um, so that's, that's what Finish It Friday is, the first Friday of the month. This Finish It Friday, I think I might actually lay this quilt out just so that part of it's done. So I think I'm kind of cheating on Finish It Friday again. Last Finish It Friday, we started this quilt. <laughs> um, so we actually started a new project instead of worked on something that we wanted to get finished. But in my head, I'm still, it was still a Finish It Friday because I bought the fabric and that fabric was why I wanted to start this project. So the act of buying the fabric was the start of the project. So in theory, that was day one of finishing it. <laughs> but yeah, we'll have some real Finish It Fridays again, though, because I do have all sorts of projects that need to get done. You know, we don't have the, remember the I Love Home quilt? where we did the, the um, by Jacqueline, it was a Jacqueline St uh, Steve's sew along and uh, it had a whole pile of embroidery and um, needle turn applique. That was kind of like my, my experiment of working with embroidery and needle turn applique in one piece. That's not done, the front is done. Uh, I was sewing all the pieces together for the back so we could do some more of that. But man, that would be nice to that would be nice to move along here because that's got a long way to go yet. Uh, it has, um, you know, we have to quilt the whole thing yet. And now that we've done a whole pile of, we've done tons of stuff since then. So since then, I've learned how to free motion quilt. I mean, that's that's pretty big. So um, for for that quilt, I would like to do like. I don't know, try some fancy free motion quilting. That'll be a neat one to free motion quilt. Oh, you haven't, yours is sandwiched, but but it's not quilted yet, Robin, your Isle of Home. Yeah, so uh, that's one we got to pick up again um, because that's that's got some neat opportunities for quilting that we haven't, that I haven't really had yet where we have a block and then like a nice border. So we could do like some decorative stuff in the border that's different than the block. Like there's some things that we can do that um, that I haven't attempted yet. So that's, that's an unfinished thing. You know, I still have my, my Pearl Soho, um, what is it, that bobble, the sheep bobble pillow. <laughs> that's not done. There's always my emergency craft kit. That'll probably stay my emergency craft project. My emergency craft project is that doily that I'm crocheting out of purple, purple, uh, uh, sulky embroidery thread. They're, they're 12 weight thread. So <laughs> that's my project that I just bring with me wherever. And if I, if I find myself stuck somewhere, I can always pull it out and do a few stitches on that. And man, that feels good when I can pull that out and do that. It's like a little magic trick, <laughs> a magic trick of calm. <laughs> uh, so there's that. There's always my jean quilt, which is, you know, you know stretching out to like a two decade project, which is crazy. Um, we're not quite there yet, but it's, it's past the decade, that's for sure. Oh man, so there's all sorts of stuff I can do for Finish It Friday, but instead I'm going to be uh, <laughs> working on this project again. Well, that's okay. I might just place, we might just, um, 
lay out all of the, well, lay out the quilt. So you're going to get an intro to my living room again. <laughs> we have a carpet there since, um, or a rug there since, since I think you've seen it last. Um, so you'll get to see that will be, I haven't laid out a quilt in my living room since, um, since we got that carpet. So it'll be a little weird, I think. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm not even sure this is going to fit. So we're going to have to see how that works. We're going to lay it out. I think we're going to lay out this quilt just with them all the same direction to start out with, just to, um, just to kind of make sure that like two, two colors that are the same, like this one and this one aren't touching. So we'll lay them all out and then we'll rearrange so they're not touching. And then I think we'll rotate them how they're meant to be rotated. And then we'll pick them all up and label the rows. I think I'm going to sew them together by rows. I'm not going to do the, the, um, webbing style this time just because I don't have a good if if I was going to sew it all in one day and I was going to keep it on the floor then maybe I would do the accordion not the accordion the um webbing way of sewing but I'm not going to do that I'm going to just sew them together by rows that might be a lot of stuff that you don't know what I'm talking about at all <laughs> uh, but um that's okay We'll, uh, we'll go through everything. We go through everything step by step. So if you hang out here, you'll, you'll pick up some of those things. But yeah, so I think I'm going to do it some row by row, which means I got to number each row because I might not come back and sew them right away. Because I'm going to treat it like a finish it Friday. We're going to do that. We're going to lay out the quilt. And then it'll be back to the splendid sampler too. Oh, Bonnie, that sounds like fun. Yeah, the jean quilt is way pre, pre, pre the, the, the first splendid sampler. <laughs> And gosh, it, it's so close to being done. Like if I had like a full eight hour day to just chill in my living room and watch movies or TV show and just work on that, it would be done. But it, it needs that big dedicated chunk of time because I, I need to finish. I'm, I'm tying the jean quilt. So I'm Instead of quilting it with like the sewing machine, I'm just taking some wool yarn and tying knots all over it. And I'm almost done with the rows of the quilt um, doing that, but I still have to go all the way around for the border. And that's gonna take probably almost as long as tying the actual quilt. And then I have to put a binding on yet. So those two things uh, is, is what I need to do for that. And I. I don't even, I don't think I have a binding made for it either. So that's got to get measured and, and made. Uh, so that still has a lot to go. Gosh, it's so close. So close, but so far away yet. Uh, boo. It'll get there. That's why I need to work on a project with all these little happy stars and happy sunshines. Just because I, <laughs> uh, I need to not think about all those unfinished projects, I suppose. I do like finding cute containers to put them in, though. That's always kind of fun. All oh, these sunshines are sweet. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lorraine. Yes, it's the happiest, happiest fabric that ever was. <laughs> I like it. So the other thing is, you know, when we lay this out, 
you know, very similar ones are together in this pile. So I'm wondering if I should shush up the pile a little bit. Or, I'll, you know, when I lay them out, I'll just um, be aware and I'll on purpose try and grab grab um, blocks where they don't have the same same fabric in it. And you know, if two of the fabrics are near each other like this, that's fine too. I just don't want a whole clump of them. Oh, you're still looking for this cool um, sewing mat. So this is a, this mat right here, it's a wool pressing mat, uh, Mark. I do, I, I have a, gosh, I think I have a link to it in this post here. They're surprisingly pricey, at least in my head. You think this would just be like a cheap little whatever, but um, I can't remember how much it is right now, but um, I do remember thinking, oh wow, that's pricier than I thought. But I I really do love it. That and the iron, this iron is kind of a pricey iron, but these two, this combo of these two things are definitely, um, some of my favorite, favorite tools. I think if I had to choose my three favorite tools that I've acquired as I've been um, doing these, these Facebook Lives here, it would be this pressing mat. Oh gosh, I might have to do four things. I was gonna say this pressing mat, the, uh, the cordless, this Panasonic cordless iron, and honestly, those True Grip stickers. So the True Grip stickers, do I have any near me? Oh yeah, so here are the, those True Grip stickers. They're just these little round stickers that go in the bottom of your rulers. And holy cow, they make it so your rulers don't slip and slide around. And uh, really, that was a game changer for me. <laughs> just because I, I get so nervous with cutting and uh, you know it's so hard sometimes to keep your ruler from slipping, especially if you're cutting like a long a long um, strip and those those true grip stickers just really do a nice job of keeping the ruler it's actually the best thing that I that I've um, played with as far as I'm um, keeping that simple and keeping keeping the ruler in place so those three things then I was gonna say for a fourth one I do really like my adjustable sewing table um, by sewing mates. So that's that's a handy thing. That's that's a nice new bonus for my my machine. So there, are four favorites. I have a second tier of favorites after that. I, I should make a whole list um, one of these days. Cause some of them, some of these things that, you know, I, I like testing out these products and some of the, sometimes I'm like, okay, that was fine. But sometimes they, I mean, a lot of times they surprise me at the ones that I, that I really like. Yeah, Bethany says the add a quarter ruler was the gadget for you. So that is definitely the top of my second tier of favorite things. So um, I don't think it would push any of the four things that I said, um, the add a quarter ruler for foundation paper piecing. I don't think it would push these four things that I said out of, out of their slots, but it would be, that would be near underneath, you know, some of the other things. Yeah, so the add a quarter, Love, love. Um, my little rotating cutting mat. That's pretty schnazzy. I do like that. Um, let's see. You know, I do like those, um, that uh, half square triangle. Um, the, what is that? The clearly slotted. Oh, that half square triangle ruler that we've been using. I do like that, but I feel like that's too fresh still to decide if that's on my favorites list or anything. Any anything yet? Ha! Yep, we should write a a, a Julie Andrews um, favorite things up uh, for for the quilting. That'd be fun. Man, if we're getting real detailed, so like the uh, the add a quarter ruler. 
you know, that westerly foot that I got, that free motion quilting foot. Pretty happy with that so far. But again, is that just a tool that I didn't own before or is it a favorite thing? I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I think I'm more excited about the free motion quilting. Yeah, maybe I don't know enough about that to put that on my favorites list, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that actually though still. It's a standout product. All right, you know what? I'm putting that on my favorites. So let's see. The four, the iron, the pressing mat, the true grip stickers for the rulers, and my, my sewing mates adjustable sewing table. Those are fabulous. Oh my God, Wonder Clips. That is a very good point. Uh, okay, that's that's my number five. That's my top five. I got to put Wonder Clips in the top five. That's that is true, Wanda. That is that's got those have got to be up there. I use those all the time. They grip things like crazy. I don't have to deal with pins. Okay, there's my top five. We're good to go on the top five. <laughs> yeah, I got to get those Wonder Clips in for sure. So after that. And I think maybe the things after that are just kind of more specific to certain types of quilting or sewing. So I think maybe that's why they didn't get into the top five. So the not top five, I would say the rotating cutting mat, um, the westerly quilting foot, um, Oh, I said, oh, the add a quarter ruler. And potentially that half square triangle ruler guy that I have to still return to Amazon and, and get replaced because it broke. And you know, if I'm being real, I would say my, my six and a half inch square ruler, just because I use it all the time and I love it. So... There you go. That was about 10, right? That's my top 10. <laughs> oh, my penguin and fish business card. I do like that. That's that's my little uh, extra little tool to keep my, my uh, quarter inch seam allowances going. <laughs> I don't know if that counts. Oh, stiletto, Jenna, you're right, okay. Did I hit 10 yet? Let's pretend I only said nine things. So the, the 10th would be um, the little turkey lacer stiletto. That's, that's, that, that I do find valuable. I've been using that a lot. I suppose you could call my top 10 list almost my most used list as well. Mine is like, you know, some of the specialty things like the add a quarter ruler we only use when we do foundation paper piecing, but still. Game changer for that. Yeah, rotary cutter. To me, that's, that's, that's like a given tool to me. Um, that's like an essential, I think. The, the, um, rotary cutter. The rotary cutter, a cutting mat, and just like a straight ruler. I'm calling those essentials um, for, for quilting. Obviously you don't need them for quilting. You can use a scissors, you can use a different ruler, different, um, or you don't need a ruler or mat at all. You can just cut out um, your pieces with a scissors. So you don't, it's not essential essential, but let's just call it the beginner's kit for um, a quilter. You'd have the rotary cutter and the cutting mat and a ruler. So let's, so I'm not counting that those as favorites. All my favorites are kind of above and beyond things that you don't actually need, <laughs> but make life a whole lot easier. <laughs> so they're, they're, uh, they're splurges that I, that I like, I suppose, more than necessary tools. Although now that we've been using a ton, using them a ton, they've, I'd be sad if they weren't part of my grouping. Now they've, they're becoming my necessary tools. Stacks getting bigger. We are definitely not halfway yet though. 
Oh, the grippets. Oh, yes. The grippets. I said that in my head, but I think I was talking about something else. So I, I didn't say, I didn't get a chance to say it out loud. Yep, the, the grippets are, those have been a very nice little bonus as well. And the little PF stork scissors, the penguin, my little penguin and fish colorful stork scissors. I do use that often. Yes, that's true. Again, that's, that's kind of a basic, I think, little bitty scissors. Oh, Robin. Okay, I like that. The Kai scissors. Now that is a fancy, lovely, lovely, lovely tool that I love. Okay. I would almost put that in the top five if I had another like, slot for the top five. That's true. That Kai scissors is just nice. A good fancy scissors that will cut through anything that makes a pretty sound when you use it. I like that one. Yep. Okay. I'm still calling it a top 10. <laughs> Everything I use. Well, you know, Kathy, that's kind of like the whole life-changing magic of tidying up stuff. I mean, I end up only using the stuff that I love using. And, um, you know, if there's something that I just hate, I've been doing that a lot lately, actually. If there's something that I just hate, I will start um, switching it out for something that I like better. Um, you know, like the scissors, or, or for example, that that um, the my uh, my ironing board. Like I hated it. First of all, I got a new small tabletop ironing board because my old one got so gross because I used a bunch of starch on it and it just got burned and was just icky and I didn't want to use it anymore. So I got another one, but I just hated it. It was cute. It's that nice teal blue, but I hate it because it keeps collapsing. It has like those little feet and whenever I move it collapses and I oh, kept almost pushing it off the table. I just hated it. And it actually put burn marks on my fabric. So instead of just, I don't know, being mad about it forever, uh, eventually I got this, this wool pressing mat and now it's like my favorite thing. It's on my top five. So, you know, I am using all my top my top tens here because I've been weeding out the things that I am meh about. Ooh, they're, they're selling Kai scissors at Spotlight there? Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, they're great. <laughs> I do, I have noticed that. <laughs> All the really nice things have a really nice price tag too. <laughs> so that's that's kind of a bummer, but you know, that's I suppose you you keep keep working up to all those things. <laughs> uh. If I had to start with two things though, like out of all of these things that I just said, if I were to suggest two things first, it would probably be those True Grip stickers and the Wonder Clips. Honestly, I think I think those would be the most life improving out of out of all of those. Like if someone had the basic set, someone had the rotary cutter, the the um, mat, and the ruler, and they wanted to and they have like pins and stuff, and they wanted to know what to get next. I would say those True Grip stickers, so your rulers don't slide around everywhere, that made a huge difference for me, like huge. And um, the Wonder Clips, just cause, man, as a pin alternative, I mean, it's fabulous. So, luckily, out of all my top 10, those are probably the two cheapest things. <laughs> So yeah, the rest of these things, like the cordless iron, I mean, that's, that's a gift. <laughs> um, but yeah, those, those true grip stickers and the wonder clips, I think that would be my, if someone asked me, that would be my, 
out of that list. Those would be my first recommendations if you're trying to like level up, I suppose. Oh, so you bought one of those uh, laser lights from Harbor Freight. I haven't tried that yet. And I just discovered that we have a Harbor Freight by us. So um, I'm going to have to check that out sometime because I've been wanting to play with that too. So those laser lights, you can get a little laser and hook it up, just like, I don't know, tape it somehow to your sewing machine. And you can have it put a laser out at your quarter inch seam allowance. So you can have the laser and then just have your, line up your fabric along that laser. So that's kind of fancy. Oh, Nolene, I'll have to, yeah, I, I still have to check them out um, at Spotlight. Or check out the Spotlight for stuff. And I just realized it's Saturday by you guys over there. Man, it's Friday here. Whew. Week went by, jeez. Man, though, the pool today at the YMCA had like twice as many people as usual in it today. So I don't know if there's, if it's something about Fridays, maybe more people are swimming on Fridays. I don't know. We're gonna have to see how that goes. I've seen people use those lasers at least, like, I think I've seen them advertised on Facebook or something for um, people using them on their scissors to cut, too. I don't know how that would work. Maybe that's not quite right. Oh, did you guys see that cute little pink sewing machine that was for sale? in town here. Man, if I had, I don't know, I need a library or something so I can get all, so I can save all these poor little sewing machines that look so sweet and cute and just need to be cleaned up and loved and I don't know. It was a Kenmore too and all my other ones are kind of these Kenmore sewing machines. So man, that pink, Sweet little pink sewing machine. Oh, Barbara, I did not get it. I, you know, if space wasn't an issue, I might have been like, hey, could you do it for $20 or something? I might have bid on it a little bit, see what she had to say. Um, but it was awfully sweet looking. Oh, I can't, I can't do another one of those though. I still have the, that other Kenmore sitting on the shelf here that I haven't even tried to fix or test out yet. And ah, where are these things gonna live? I just don't have the space. But it was so sweet and cute. Little pink sewing machine. Oh, you love the iron. Yes, this is the best. One of the best things. I mean, she didn't know if the, she didn't know, the buyer didn't know if that, or the seller, I mean, didn't know if that pink sewing machine worked really. And uh, you know, it, it did look pretty dusty and beat up a little bit and, and the table did too. So, but you know, $40 for, usually the tables, it's those um tables for the sewing machine. That's not what they're called. What do you call the thing that you put a, the sewing the little tables that the sewing machines go in? Anyway, that those are the things that can be pricey sometimes compared to the sewing machine even. Um, so 40 bucks for all of it I think is still pretty much a steal, but I would probably maybe try and come down just because she doesn't know if it's working. Um, but still, it was cute. And I'm not gonna do it anyway, because I have enough sewing machines and I don't have any space. If I had a giant room and I'm like, dang, what am I gonna put in this room? I would fill it with sewing machines. 
I would save sewing machines. I, and I would uh, I would have an unfinished project on all of them so I could just wander around and be like, oh, I can sew a couple rows on this project. All right, pink sewing machine, it's your turn today. And I would just do that and then I'd walk over and I'd find a different sewing machine and be like, okay, you're cute. I'm gonna work on these half score triangles that are sitting on you today. And uh, that would be like my whole day. <laughs> wandering around this random room that I have filled with sewing machines and projects. <laughs> oh god. One day I'm gonna have that room and then I'm going, uh, they're gonna find my body there one day and they're gonna be like, what the heck crazy kind of room is this? I like it. <laughs> Adrian, that's true. I could put, I could get one for the warehouse because I do have the warehouse for penguin and fish now. I actually don't have much space there either, but it would be really fun to have a sewing machine there. Ow, you're tempting me with stuff. Oh man. I think I'd get a huge slow motion eye roll from John if, if I ended up doing that. Well, there's one thing I know at least is there's plenty of those sewing machines to be saved out there. So if I don't save this one, someone else will and there'll be more, I suppose. <laughs> But it's funny, I, I will find myself just every once in a while, I'll go on Facebook Marketplace and type in sewing machine and see what's around in my area. You never know, someone might say free on like an amazing sewing machine one of these days and then I'll, then I'll jump on it, I don't know. Maybe I won't still, but. <laughs> Oh, you have an Ikea bookshelf with four of your six machines. Oh, that's a, that's a good way. That's a neat way of doing it though. Oh, I like that. Then you can kind of display them and pull them out when needed. Oh, I like that. That would be for ones that don't have like the table. Table isn't the word. Did someone mention what the word was? It's not, it's not a dresser. It's not a table. Cabinet. It's the cabinet. It's the, the sewing cabinet. That's, that's what they're called, right? Yeah. Um, I knew there was a word for it. For it. I just want to clean it up and oil it and see if it works. Poor little guy. This still baffles me how um, undervalued, to me they're undervalued sewing machines are, but I suppose they were common day objects that everyone had, so they're just everywhere. And for people nowadays, they're heavy, they take up a ton of space, and if you're not using it, then it's just this heavy giant thing in your, in your, um, in your house. That's the other thing. If you go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or anything, that's the same thing with pianos. So, geez, I, I think I might have said this here before, um, but if you go just type in piano, they are all free. There are, like, I could go out this weekend and probably pick up 20 free pianos from a 20 mile radius by me. Like seriously, they just, people want to get rid of them. They're moving it. They can't, they don't, you know, it's a lot to move them. I always said that like, or like one of my ideas was if I ever had like a coffee shop or something, 
it would be cool to like have a wall of pianos and then people could sit down at them and stuff, but like have them like, like from floor to ceiling pianos. Um, and you know, you'd have to like screw in the wall, like into the beams and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, so they don't fall on people, but then just have them so you can, uh, people can play them and they're just all pretty in there. I mean, man, I don't know. For free, you could do some big, giant, cool wall like that. Ooh, Jenna! That sounds exciting. You'll have to share how that goes when you get back. Have fun! Jenna's going to Italy in the morning. Oh, look at these sweet little fellers, this cute little rainbow. I still like these stars. They're like little gold star stickers. All right, you guys, I think we're about halfway done here. We actually, I mean, time's flying by, isn't it? So, I don't know, I wanted to get this done though, so we might just, oh God, there really are a lot left yet. I don't know, I might have to squeeze in another pressing day here. I, I thought it, we got all the other ones when we did the, the six and a half inch uh, strip. I thought we got all that done in one evening, but I don't know about that anymore, I mean, we got a long ways to go here, it looks like. I don't know. We'll see. We'll stay a little bit longer and see where we're at. Coffee and keys. Penguin fish coffee and keys. Love it, Gina. That, that's, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, if you're in the market for sewing machines or pianos, you can get them real cheap. <laughs> so did any of you guys make a prototype of our sewing machine that presses seams open at the same time? After we discussed our invention last night. Because that'd be a nice thing to have still. Oh, yeah, Barbara, they are looking... Uh, yeah, it takes a lot of ironing, but they are... They're looking... They look so finished with each step. So much more finished with each step. It's always a surprise to me. You know they're going to be more finished, because obviously you're doing the next step. They're going to be more finished, but just how clean and, I don't know, finished they look is always a little bit more exponential than I expect. Oh good, Gretchen's, Gretchen's on, <laughs> on it. <laughs> Our uh, sewing machine invention that will press seams open as you sew. Yeah, maybe this is getting a little bit smaller. I think it's deceiving because this pile doesn't feel that much bigger than this pile, but this pile is flat and this pile still has that folded over seam. So there's, in theory, well, maybe not. I was gonna say in theory, there's more fabric here. So my pile would appear bigger, but actually I don't know if that's really true. Yeah, without heat. So like some infrared uh, <laughs> or something. Um, sewing machine that presses seams open as you sew. You think white quilts always look summery? I think so too. I think this is gonna be, this is definitely gonna be our kind of summer lightweight quilt. At least that's what I'm hoping for. I do like, it gets to a point in summer that we just ditch the quilt altogether and we just have a, like a little 
like our in the middle blanket or sometimes we just only have a sheet just because it's so hot but I'm hoping I'm hoping this can act as like our summer kind of go-to quilt coffee and keys and stitching yeah uh, it would be cheap to set up we would just need need to pay rent and then uh, to decorate <laughs> it'll We'll decorate it all with uh, Facebook Marketplace from the free section. Or Craigslist from the free section. Done! <laughs> oh, Linda! You notice that? So Linda asked what happened to my non-removable bracelet. It broke off. And uh, a day later, my husband's broke off too. So uh, we have them both still. They're not lost. Um, so I, I want to just uh, put a clasp on them and I haven't I haven't done it yet. That's another unfinished project. But yeah, so I had this cute little, I thought it was cute at least, this little bracelet that was on my wrist here. And it, it's so fun. So we got it on our trip to New York last year for like our birthdays and anniversary. We both have summer birthdays and a summer uh, wedding anniversary. So we went to New York last year for that, and we went to this jewelry place called Catbird. <laughs> uh, so that's a good name. Uh, but they had this little thing that they do. Is they have like little gold chains, and they'll have someone weld it. Um, they'll like put it, attach it, put a little like loop ring in there and weld it to you um, while you sit there. So they'll like zap it with the little welder. And then it's like attached to you. You can't take it off. There's no clasp or anything. It's just there. But it is kind of like a lightweight little um, cute gold chain. So I don't know. I must have actually. I think it. I think it fell off at at night. So like I, I noticed that it was off when I was at the office, and then I texted John like, "Is it at home?" And you know, I even. <laughs> I thought, oh my god, what if it fell in the pool or something? It broke off in the pool and I didn't notice. But So I checked our Facebook Live from the night before and I noticed that I was wearing it. So it hadn't fallen into the pool. It happened since the Facebook Live. And he said that he found it in the bed or next to the bed or something. So I must have, I don't know, in my sleep just like snagged it or grabbed it or something. And, uh, um, and it broke off. And then... It, like the, the next day or the next two days, he was doing some work or something and snagged it and, and it broke off too. So, boo! So we both are missing our cute little uh, bracelets. But again, I think, you know, it's just, a, it's just a little gold chain. So if I, um, and I have some clasps, some jewelry clasps um, sitting around here somewhere. So if I just kind of put a little clasp on it, I, I don't have a solderer or anything like that. Um, but I'll just, you know, try and close, close the jump ring so it doesn't fall off. So I think I can do that. Just haven't yet. John says we should just go to New York again and get another one. <laughs> I think I'll try just putting a clasp on first and we'll be good with that. Oh, there's a pile here yet. Let's keep going though. Look how nice and neat this pile is. Good! I'm glad you guys are finished or figuring out this magic sewing machine <laughs> that uh, presses the seams as you sew. Yeah, look at We'd be able to skip the, all of this that we're doing now. I just sew and it would press it open and they'd come off as perfect little uh, pressed blocks right away. Oh my god, that would just be the best. Oh, God. We're going to be bajillionaires, people, if we figure that out. <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know if anyone would care about us. I don't know. They'd care. That'd be a huge, nice feature on these things. Ugh, yeah. Skip all this stuff. You could just tell the machine what side you wanted your seam allowance to be, if you wanted it pressed to the left or to the right, and 
Ooh, what would be cool is if you sew it, you can turn it back and write as you sew. Like you can keep deciding left and right because what if I wanted this one left and this one right so I could nest the seams together later. I could just keep keep telling it to switch back and forth like a little button. So every other one. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, cute little blue sunshines. You know, that's how stuff gets done though. Those sci-fi people come up with things that, you know, would be awesome. Like, dang, why didn't this get invented yet? And then, then scientists want to invent it after that. So you need those creative sci-fi artist people to be keep on coming up with all those fun invention inventions. Yeah, exactly like the Alexa. <laughs> That's been a big sci-fi thing forever. <laughs> Although a lot of times with those Technology things doesn't always end well for the humans in those stories, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're just gonna finish this. I know there's a lot left here, but ugh, I don't know if I can just leave it. Because we're gonna be switching to the Splendid Sampler again next week. And I don't think I can leave this as an unfinished stack, so stick around, folks. We're going to get this puppy done here. It's fun to see these patterned uh, fabrics all framed up, though, with the sashing or, or with the uh, two strips around it. I suppose this is still faster than doing them each individually. Cute, cute. Yeah, exactly, Barbara. I think so too. So uh, Barbara says this pat the pattern, the quilt pattern is perfect for the fabrics here, and that's that's exactly why I picked the the pattern. So I loved the fabric, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get this fabric. Um, you know, when I was at the the fabric store, uh, Missouri Star Quilt Co. Um, I'm like, oh, I need every every one of these bolts. So there was there was eight of them, I'm, and I didn't know how much to get. So I'm like, yeah, give me a yard and a half of each. Um, yeah, I think I said a yard. Maybe I just said a yard. Eh, I think I probably said a yard in it. Wait, what did I say? Maybe I just got half yards. Yeah, I think maybe I just got a half yard of each. Gosh, now I don't know. I suppose I can figure out. Yeah, half yard. So I said, give me a half yard of each because I figured what I really wanted was like a little fat quarter bundle of them, but they didn't have any fat quarter bundles. So I'm like, give me a half yard of each. And that's like two fat quarters in a half yard. So, all right, fine. And then I was just kind of wandering and I remember seeing the quilt. So the quilt that we're making now, she had on the wall, like the actual quilt from the book was hanging up on the wall. And I remember seeing that when we were wandering through, it was just in the other room. And I'm like, oh, you know what? That quilt would be perfect because it's it has big pieces. And what I wanted is, I didn't want to chop up this fabric into tons of tiny pieces. I wanted to see the cute fabric. I wanted to see it just as it was on the bolt, like just like the, the pretty pattern. And uh, so I, went over to the quilt on the wall and it, and it had um, it listed underneath like a little label of where I could um, find the pattern and the pattern happened to be in one of their block books. So I found that at the store and got that with it and it, we got, and we, I got lucky with my half a yard that I got of each because it was like the exact amount that I needed 
for the pattern. So yeah, it I on purpose got this pattern for for this because I knew it would show off. It looked first of all, it was gonna be easy, <laughs> super easy block, which I wanted, and because I wanted to work on it right away, and uh, it saved big chunks of the fabric. So it was like a showcase of fabric collection um, type block or a uh, type quilt pattern. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked for it. And I'm really excited about, I'm, I'm gonna put a bright green background on it and a binding. So it'll be this white, it'll feel super white, you know, and then with our fun patterns in it, and then it'll have this bright green tiny border because it'll be the binding framing the whole, the whole bit. That'll be fun. That'll brighten it and summary it up. Oh, Catherine, is, is it your birthday? Oh, and Robin, it was just, it's your birthday too? Wait. Or oh, Robin was yours the other day. Someone's birthday was the other day too. Man, happy birthday to everyone. Yeah, John and I are summer birthdays, so I just realized that our birthdays are kind of coming up soon, too. It does not feel like summer yet, though. Ugh. Well, happy birthday, ladies. Oh, yours was the 22nd. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I'm like, wait, I thought it was Robin's birthday already. Happy birthday anyway, still. <laughs> Happy birthday week. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. The stack's starting to look smaller. Oh, yay, Marie, you got your um, fabric already. Oh, I'm so happy you like them. Yeah, so I, I my first little uh, batch of, you know, I had that all that fabric left over. Well, not left over, but I'm very, very, very low on fabric, penguin and fish fabric. And it sounds like some of you guys are getting yours. So just so you all know, I only have one more of the uh, fat quarter for this the orange and yellow serengeti beasties that that um that collection and i only have i think five more of the light blue and then that's it that is like literally it for uh fabric that i'll be selling um of my penguin and fish fabric i haven't designed fabric in a, in a like maybe two years or a year or two and uh, it's all gone. All that's all I have left is just my own yardage, and I don't have a full collection of anything. So I don't have any, like I can't put together a bundle like the ones I had anymore. So it's just my little spares um, hanging out. So yeah, just those, yeah, those six bundles left, and then I'll be um, taking taking it off the website. So I'll I'll leave I'll leave that fabric section up until they're all gone, but there might just be, you know, one left or something right now. But yeah, like I said, there's only one bundle left of that orange, and then five. I can't remember if it was five or six, but I think five of the light blue. It'll say if you go to quantity, um, there'll only be the amount that exists. So. That will be that. I'm kind of sad about it, actually. When I real, I was doing some inventorying, and I realized, oh my gosh, this is all that I have left. It's crazy. 
So yeah, that's what's got me thinking about designing fabric again. It's just because it's gone. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I've, I have some for myself, Nolene. So I, I have, I have some fat quarters that, um, so when I usually make my fat quarter bundles for the website, I have the whole collection, but split up. But now I don't have enough to make any of those groupings anymore. So I could probably put together some just random fat quarter bundles, but that would, I would have to do a separate, I mean, that would be hard. I mean, that's good for fabric stores because you can, you're there and you can like look through them and stuff and um, see what's in the bundle. But I think that would be a little difficult for, for the website here. So I have just kind of random fat quarters and then I just have a little bit of yardage that I will use for myself. So I think I have plenty of scraps and plenty for my own sort of stuff, but not really anything sellable like it would be it would just be weird super duper random it's, yeah it would be weird to sell it it'd be just like a, I don't know how I would group it or anything do I have samples made up of specific patterns like of my quilt patterns and stuff I do still have all those. So that's the thing too. Like eventually on the website, I might have a, like kind of a samples page or like a, I don't know, a page where, cause eventually I'm going to have so many samples of different products here that I'm not going to want them anymore really. So like quilts that we've made or, or stuff like that. And I might eventually put, or just embroidery kits that I make for, you know, just to take a photo of it or just, you know, that I've made more than one. Um, and then I just have this finished embroidery kit. So I might have like an area of finished samples on the site at some point. So we'll, we'll see. That would take some gathering of things. And I kind of have a hard time parting with things too, so there's that. Oh, this stack still has a lot in. We're gonna finish it though. There's some flaws in this white fabric, like there's some really big kind of weird threads going through them, but I think that's gonna add a lot of texture. Patterns to showcase the fabric. Like, like a quilt pattern that showcases the fabric or what do you mean? Sorry, I'm just not quite understanding. I should, you know, actually, if you're saying, do I have an, like, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't have an area on my website for where you can see all the old patterns or anything. So those are kind of in the ether too. So I don't know, maybe that's something I should get on the website somewhere. We'll see. Cause I did about 10 different collections. I think a couple of them didn't get made. Oh, I was actually pretty sad about the last collection. Um, that one we didn't end up making, uh, but it was all cute dinosaurs and um, dinosaur bones and, and all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, like a photo gallery or something. Yeah, I guess I just haven't thought about that. I'll have to do that. 
Oh, you bought some fabric, but I haven't found a reason to cut it up. Fun. The baby quilt you made as a gift was a good sample. Oh, that's true. Yeah, exactly, Barbara. So I'd like to kind of do some more things like that. Just have um, have some stuff with the fabric in the shop. But yeah, I should put a page together of just different collections that we did. Because some of it is available yet. Like if you do a Google search uh, for some of the fabric, like, you know, like here Kitty Kitty was one of my favorite collections. If you do a search for here Kitty Kitty and Penguin and Fish or Alyssa Thomas or Clothworks, that was the manufacturer. Um, if you put together some things like that in a Google search and click the shopping button, it does exist out there yet. There's some, there's some little bits of it hiding here and there. So yeah, so that'd be a good reason to put past collections up if you wanted to do a little search for them. Well, that's a good idea. Ah, we're getting there. I, I can, I can feel it here. Maybe we'll only have to do this like eight more times, maybe. Maybe there's about 16 there. That's my guess. Oh, these ponies are so sweet. We're getting there. Oh, the stack is looking good. It is, it is tall. It is a tall stack. Have to find a good place for it because we're not going to work on it for a little while. So again, just a reminder, I will not be here Monday or Tuesday next week. Uh, Monday's Memorial Day and Tuesday I have an evening meeting that I have to go to. Um, so Wednesday it will be Oh yeah, stripes and polka dots, those go with everything. You can always use some stripes and polka dots with quilting. Alrighty. Maybe I'll have to, those favorite things that we're talking about, maybe I'll have to throw that in our, um, like these Facebook Live notes that I have underneath the post here. I'll just have to have a list of my favorite things there all the time. Are you going to lay some blocks out so we can see the pattern? Um, I think I'm going to wait, Glenda, for that until finish it Friday. So that'll be the first Friday of June. So it's not this Friday, but it'll be the Friday after this coming Friday. I think that's correct. Um, so we'll get like a week and a half of the Splendid Sampler, and then then we'll do that. Only I'm saying that only because the layout is actually quite big. So it's several blocks. Um, so the layout, row one has a certain layout and row two has a certain layout. And then it's just repeated after that. But it's not just like two blocks and it's turned, it's like six or seven blocks or something. I, I don't remember offhand, but it's, it's several blocks tilted in a certain way to create the pattern. And I actually don't think I have enough space here to create that. So I'm going to wait till 
um, till the, or finish it Friday for that, because then, then I'll be on the floor. I can lay everything down. It doesn't seem that hard, like if you have the, the pattern by you, um, it doesn't seem that hard. It just, it's not, at least when I look at it, for me, it's not entirely intuitive either. So um, I'm going to need to have the book open and look at it to get it right for sure. Ah, we're so close. Let's do it. We're getting there. Oh, you got a bundle. Um, called Bada Bing. Oh, that's cute. I like when the salvage says cute things on it. That's fun. I think more companies are playing with the salvage like that lately. Oh no! Okay, mom just stepped in here. So my finish it Friday is walleye weekend. Is it really? Well, then we might be on location. <laughs> we'll we'll see. Oh shoot. Okay, we might have to have an upgraded. Um... I thought walleye weekend was the weekend after. Okay, I'm gonna have to check. But um, mom says. My finish of Friday is Walleye Weekend, so that means it means a few things. So, first of all, Walleye Weekend <laughs> is a big crazy event uh, in the town where I grew up, and uh, it has like the world's largest fish fry, and it's just like a big funny fair. But they have a, a running event thing, and my brother, who is the skiing brother, who I haven't seen forever, he's gonna be home, and he's going to do that run and John signed up for the run too. So we will be going home so they can do that run and so we can hang out at Walleye Weekend. And, uh, um, oh, Barbara, hi. Yep, I'm, I'm going late. So that's Walleye Weekend. So we're gonna go home for that. But if it is also finish it Friday, I'll try and do, um, That would be good because then I can lay all this stuff on the floor at my mom and dad's house and they have more floor space to do that in. We'll see. I might have, I'm going to have to look at the calendar because maybe we'll have to adjust finish it Friday. We might have to do finish it Friday a week early or something, but hopefully not. For some reason in my brain, I thought while I weekend was the week after. Ah, well. We'll get it all figured. All right, you guys, one left. So that was 166, and this is 167. Oh, wait, that doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah, because I had the other one done. So this is 167 because the one I had done is at the bottom. This is 168 here. Last guy. Ugh. All right, we made it. Here is the stack. Check that out. That is a good looking stack. Right now, now it's um, white on all the sides. That's the first time we've had that. Woohoo! All right, done. So yeah, so finish it Friday or whenever we decide that is, we will lay this all out. So I'll have a big floor. We'll lay it all out, make sure that none of the same things, same patterns are touching each other, and then we'll do the rotation of um, how they are in the pattern. And then we'll label them row one through, I think, 14. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, thanks for uh, sticking with me again here. Let's see. Oh yeah, we went we went a little ways over. So here we go. Let me show you from the side. Boop. That's 168 cute little darling squares. Oh, it's gonna be so sweet. Look at that. Ah, love it. 
smiley stars. All right, you guys, I'm stoked. So again, I will let you know when we'll do this. In theory, it'll still be our finished Friday date. I'll check that out for sure. Oh, and have a great Memorial Day weekend, everyone. Uh, I'll be back here Wednesday of next week. Uh, so uh, I'll see you guys all again then. And so this video, I'll get up on Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube. And then, yeah, I will be back uh, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's, what was it again? I forgot to put it in the, in the, the uh, blip today. Uh, 9.30 Eastern and 6.30, Mount, or, uh, 630 uh, Pacific. <laughs> All right, on Wednesday. So thanks again, guys. Love y'all. See you later.